So, yeah, we just talked about 2020. It's been quite the year. Um, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Vaccines will be made available very soon. So I hope, uh, I hope the situation will normalize again early next year. Um, it's been the ninth Meta Forum already. Um, we did the first one in 2010. It feels like yesterday. And uh, I hope next year we can have then another face-to-face -face conference. Now, this, this Meta Forum, of course, has been different. We um, tried to adapt the schedule so that it fits into, into the virtual format a bit nicer. I think that worked out quite nicely. Uh, with three half-day sessions. Um, we had the virtual project expo yesterday. We had a couple of problems, but then in the end, we, we found the culprit. And now we know that a certain Zoom feature didn't work as advertised. Um, so that's the experience um, that we now have, which we didn't have before. Um, I would like to take the opportunity also now to thank all the 35 projects that we had in the project expo. Um, I hope you had good discussions. It was an experiment and I hope it worked out. Um, I can now speak for the ELG bo booth that we run, that we've run in the four project expo sessions. Um, we had a couple of really good discussions. We onboarded uh, various people to ELG providers and uh, now even more resources are coming in which was very good. And we also collected a couple of resources in addition to those that we have on our shopping list. So um, I hope that the experiment worked for all of you. So this was the, the, first, the first virtual meta forum with the adapted format stretched over three days. In fact, it's even four days because tomorrow we will have the, um, the NCC session tomorrow in the morning. Um, with the National Competence Centers, we decided to put an emphasis, emphasis this time on the, on the big, important core aspects of the project. Um, and especially on the Project Expo, we had almost 500 registered participants, which was amazing. And now today, yesterday, the day before, we have to check how many unique Zoom users we had. I guess it will be in the area of uh, 275, 300 or so, um, but we will check that and then come back to you to report on this. Um, and I think I can speak for the whole ELG team. We have a back channel here on, on Skype on different machines and everybody was, was super excited about the conference and everybody is really very happy with how it turned out. So a um, couple, of, couple of comments on where we stand right now with regard to what we just discussed in the previous session, Europe's wider multilingual Europe community. Um, there is, as Philip also mentioned, there's a lot of traction now for the topic on the international level, also on the level of at least some countries, especially Iceland is doing many different things right now um, with a government funded um, LT development program. Finland is, um, doing lots of great work, Denmark and various other countries. And now there's a chance for us for new opportunities. And when I mean us, I mean the wider um, community, not only ELG proper, but the wider community. There are many opportunities in Horizon Europe and in digital. Um, so, but still, and that sh that is shown through in, in various discussions. Also, Walter mentioned this, Walter Dahlemanns mentioned this in his presentation. Um, and others as well, how to collaborate between the European level and then the level of different countries, different regions, with different linguistic and different language communities. This is still a challenge, uh, not only for, for Belgium with, um, with French and, and Dutch and how to interconnect between Belgian activities and then activities in France and the Netherlands, but this, um, this goes through Europe, um, which is fragmented linguistically, as we all know. So countries, I think, should concentrate on getting national and regional funding programs um, that exclusively support the development and of technologies for their languages. Um, I, I hope and guess that our new project ELE will uh, also help in that regard, um, also with a wider exposure of the topic. And um, we all know, and it's, it's a, it's a catch-22 situation, scientists and researchers want to compete with their colleagues on an international level. 
so many are incentivized to work on English. Uh, and I don't know how, but this needs to change on a, on a broader level. Um, maybe benchmarking evaluations and so on, they, they need to be adapted accordingly. Um, maybe activities like, like the universal dependency um, activity that Jan Hayek is also involved in, maybe these can help so that not the predominant research output is on, in, on English. This is uh, something that needs to change. Um, I don't have a ready-made recipe, but maybe we can work on this together. So, and the coordination here, especially in Europe, should happen on the international level, and ELG and ELE surely are ready to help with this. Um, and we will also help establish the bridge, but both on the, uh, with regard to the technology platform, with its services, with data sets, resources, and the LT Council, including the NCC. So just, uh, I think this is my last slide now, the next steps. Uh, many of them have been mentioned. I just collected them for this presentation right now. So ELG platform, we had a massive extension in terms of features, services, resources, organizations. This will continue. Um, we now have well over 3,000 resources and services in the system, and this will continue to grow. Um, and also feature-wise, the platform will continue to grow. We extended the project by half a year due to COVID. Um, ELG will end in June 2022, um, which also means, of course, for Metaforum, we will have one next year and hopefully then one in June 2022. Um, we just uh, finished and closed the open call number two, and we will now start with the evaluation of the proposals. Again, super great success, um, almost the same number of proposals as in the first open call. I think we had 106. In the first one, we evaluated 110 proposals, excellent result. And on the 1st of January, the European Language Equality Project will start. Soon after, in February, March, we will uh, publish the, the second release of the ELG platform. You have seen a sneak peek in our booth already, and you can also check it out live. We need to continue further building of the uh, ELG community, including industry and research. We will organize future ELG roadshow events with the NCCs. We will further open up the ELG platform for third party services and resources. And then uh, in early 2022, release three of the platform will be made publicly available. And then, of course, the topic of sustainability that we mentioned in the previous session. So, um, let's let's close the conference, uh, Metaforum 2020, piloting the European language grid. I would like to thank all of you very, very much, um, especially the presenters, the colleagues who organized the sessions, um, people who participated in the panel discussions, or participants of the conference, the people who ran the project booths. So um, cheers, thanks very much for your participation. And I would like to give a big, big shout out here to the local uh, DFKI team, Katrin especially, and Stefanie and all the others who helped with the organization. It's been, it's been a very, very busy time recently here for all of us. And they did a marvelous job though. So thanks very much. Uh, they are in the room here with me and we are still practicing social distancing. I'm the one without a mask in the room um, so that you can understand me. Thanks again to the whole team. Excellent job. And uh, we look forward very, very much to seeing you next year at the next Metaforum. We don't know when, we don't know how, maybe again a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, but I guess um, probably again November or December, maybe in Brussels, maybe online, we will see. So thanks again and enjoy the rest of the day and the weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.